everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Welcome back to my channel and thanks for making it your new spot for gaining cyber and network knowledge. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about converting IP addresses and subnet masks to binary. And I'm also going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how we actually go about doing that conversion. Before we jump into that, make sure you hit the like button. And if this is your first time on the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification bell. That way you don't miss out whenever I drop any new videos. All right, let's get into binary. One of the biggest challenges for folks who are learning how to subnet is understanding the binary math behind it. So in this diagram, I broke it down uh, so that we could look at how we determine what the specific binary values are for each of the different portions of the IP address and the subnet mask. So the first thing that we need to understand is that the IP address is actually broken down into four different octets. An octet is a group of eight binary digits. So as we see, this uh, network address here is 192.168.1.0. Each of those individual octets corresponds to a different group of eight binary digits. For each of these octets, the highest valued number is on the left-hand side of the eight digits. So as you see here, it starts with 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So to find out what the binary value is of each of the different placeholders in the IP address, we're going to have to do a, a little bit of binary math. In order to find out the binary value of the IP address's first octet, we're going to have to do some binary math. This is going to involve starting on the far left-hand side of the octet binary place values. And we're going to take 192, and we're going to add a 1 underneath any of the uh, placeholder values that will eventually add up to that number. So in this case, 128 goes into 192. So we're going to put a 1 there. And then we would take 192 and subtract 128 from it. The leftover value from that is 64. So then we would then put a 1 under the placeholder for 64. And then since we've already equaled 192, then the rest of the values would all be 0. When we move to the next octet, in this case with a value of 168, we would follow a similar process. So does 128 go into 168? Yes, it does. So we would put a 1 there. Once we take 168 and subtract 128 from that, that leaves us with a value or a remainder of 40. Does 64 go into 40? It does not. So we would put a value of 0. We would then move on to the next placeholder, which is 32. Does 32 go into 40? Yes, it does. So we would put a 1 there and subtract 32 from 40, which leaves us with a value of 8. Again, we move to the right and the value or the placeholder of 16. 16 can't go into 8, so we would go 0. The next placeholder is 8, which fits perfectly, so we would get a 1 there. So when we do it that way, we see that the binary value that equals 168 is 10101000. We move to the third octet of the IP address and we go through the same thing. Well, this is pretty straightforward because the number is 1. So none of these placeholder values would go into or fit into the number 1 except for the last placeholder, which is 1. So it would be all zeros until we go to last placeholder, and that would equal 1. The next one is even easier than that. It's a 0, so it's zeros all the way across. So we can now move over to the subnet mask portion of the IP address. It's the same exact math as what we did with the IP address portion. It's very easy for us in this situation, though, because the uh, first octet's value is 255. When we move over to the subnet mask portion, it's exactly done the same way that we did with the IP address portion. An easy thing to remember, just like the zeros that we had all the way across equals zeros, 
is that if you have 255, that equals ones all the way across in all eight of the binary placeholder values in the octet. So we have that for the first octet, the second octet, then third octet. And then the last I, uh, the last octet and the subnet mask is zero, which we saw before is zeros all the way across. So I find that this is a, a really helpful way of trying to visualize binary math especially when it comes to trying to learn this for subnetting purposes. It'd be very helpful to write out or overlay the sequential values of the binary places over the top of the binary digits themselves, just as we did here in this diagram. Um, remember that it's always going to be a value of one or zero. Another thing to remember is that this diagram here is just dealing with looking at it from IP address perspective. In binary math, it obviously can continue to go further and further uh, to the left. So in this case, 128 was the largest uh, placeholder value. As we continue to go to the left, all we're going to do is keep doubling that. So if we were to go nine values, that placeholder value would be 256. If we would go a tenth spot, that would be 512. 11 spot would be 1024 and you can just continue to go further and further out and you will need to learn that especially when it comes to learning how to do supernetting uh, which is something that we will cover uh, in the near future so that wraps up our overview of binary in regards to ip addresses and subnet masks if you have any questions go ahead leave them in the comment section down below also if you have any ideas on any future videos you'd like me to cover drop those down below too as always hit the like subscribe and notification bell Go get at it and we'll talk soon.